Welcome to week four of Stressed Less in September. I hope you've found some of the, the things we've covered useful and helpful to stress less. This week, we're focusing on changing our perspective to stress or on stress, getting better at it, and finding the upside of stress. So let's start with this. I don't know if you remember Pogo. It's a pretty old political cartoon. Um, but this was one of the, the quotes that came out of it. We have met the enemy and he is us. So what do I mean by this? Well, how do we contribute or add to our own stress levels unwittingly? How much of our stress is fueled by our own thoughts, beliefs, and conditioning? So just to give you an example, our beliefs are very powerful. So some beliefs can actually influence longevity. For example, people with a positive attitude about aging live longer than those who hold negative stereotypes about getting older. This is from a classic study at Yale University. They followed middle-aged adults for 20 years. Those who had a positive view of aging in midlife lived an average of 7.6 years longer than those who had a negative view. To put that in perspective, consider this. Many things we regard as obvious and important protective factors, such as exercising regularly, not smoking, maintaining healthy blood pressure and cholesterol levels, have been shown on average to add less than four years to one's lifespan. So your beliefs are very, very powerful. What I'd like you to consider is how to change your mind about stress. So you might have, um, seen this video, the first link there to a TED talk. I'm not going to show it now, but if you have time, you might want to watch it. At least watch the first seven or eight minutes of it. But if you've seen it before, um, or if you haven't seen it, I'll just kind of summarize it. So this is from Kelly McGonigal, who is a health psychologist. And she, she says that um, this study made her re rethink her whole approach to stress. So she had previously been telling people, you know, stress is bad. Stress is harmful for our health. It's something that I think most of us tend to believe. It's, it's something that's been taught in healthcare for, for a long, long time. So this study that she references tracked 30,000 adults in the United States for eight years. And they started by asking people, how much stress have you experienced in the last year? So of course, uh, we know that many American adults have very high levels of stress. And then they also asked, do you believe that stress is harmful to your health? And then they used public death records to find out who died. So the bad news first, people who experienced a lot of stress in the previous year had a 43% increased risk of dying. But that was only true for people who also believe that stress is harmful to your health. People who experienced a lot of stress but did not view stress as harmful were no more likely to die. In fact, they had the lowest risk of dying of anyone in the study, including people who had relatively little stress. So in the study, when participants viewed their stress response as helpful, and they were kind of the there's ways to do that. They, they show them how to, to sort of uh, change their perspective. And so they, they kind of measured that. They found that even their cardiovascular profile improved. Their blood vessels stayed relaxed. Um, their heart was still pounding, but it was a much healthier cardiovascular profile. So she concludes this part of it by saying, over a lifetime of stressful experiences, this one biological change could be the difference between a stress-induced heart attack at age 50 and living well into your 90s. And um, it goes on. It's good. You might want to watch the whole thing. The rest of it talks about the, uh, the stress hormone oxytocin, uh, which is, is quite interesting too, and she references another study about that. But essentially, the idea is that we can learn to get better at stress. So this second link is an article that references her also. And um, basically it comes down to these three protective beliefs about stress. 
One is to view your body's stress response as helpful, not debilitating. For example, to view stress as energy that you can use. The second is to view yourself as able to handle and even learn and grow from the stress in your life. And the third is to view stress as something that everyone deals with and not something that proves how uniquely screwed up you or your life is. Um, so consider that um, if you get a chance, you might wanna watch that video or uh, read the article. But in essence, we're kind of learning to take control of our thoughts. And that's you know kind of the cartoon that I've showed before where the man was walking and kind of all cluttered in, in the thinking and, and worries that he has. Whereas the dog is able to walk along and not, not do that as you know, dogs normally do. But we can learn to do that. We can learn to, to get better at it. However, this, is, this kind of gets in the way. So chronic stress equation, you take your stressor. And if you add rumination, self-criticism or stoicism, you then get chronic stress. This is where stress becomes harmful. So the idea is that sometimes when a stressor and sometimes a you know, pretty intense thing happens to us in life, we can tend to worry about all its implications. We project, we blow it out of proportion. Um, oops, sorry, going too far there. Um, and that's that rumination part. That's the part that really kind of blows it up and you know, kind of makes a mountain out of a molehill. Or we kind of add to it by getting down on ourselves, uh, sort of in a harsh way. We talked about this a little bit last week to ease up on ourselves and be a little bit more compassionate to ourselves. Um, or we can kind of be stoic about it and not allow ourselves to feel anything and just sort of feel that if we just sort of ignore it or stuff it or, or push it away, it's not going to affect us. But of course, we know that doesn't work as well either because what usually happens there is that it piles up inside and then it bubbles over you know, when you least expect it. So that's kind of the, the uh, equation that we want to avoid, right? All right, so Mark Twain said it quite um, succinctly. My life has been filled with terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. <laughs> So, you know, I've talked about mindfulness training a little bit, but what we're doing is we're not trying to stop thinking. Rather, we're trying to cultivate a wise relationship to thoughts. And so this is really the first lesson today is what we want to do is we want to be, be more aware of the thoughts that are coming and going. Now, there's a saying that thoughts make a good servant, but a poor master. And the beliefs that run through our minds about ourselves or others are often painfully limiting stories. Um, so without mindfulness, we can end up seeing our lives through a set of beliefs and stories that for years keep us from being confident. Uh, they can create conflict and distance from others, and kind of keep us caught in self-doubt. So what we want to do is we want to begin uh, recognizing thoughts. We want to be more aware of our self-talk. Um, and that's not easy to do unless you really pay attention. So, but remember, th all thoughts are not facts. It's kind of an interesting concept to, to try to wrap your head around. Thoughts are not facts. Um, they are simply mental events that come and go. You know, our, our brain secretes thoughts much like other organs secrete hormones. Um, but so some thoughts are helpful, some are not. Some are irrational based on patterns and belief that, beliefs that have been conditioned over a long period of time in our life. And they can build up kind of like in the cartoon here. They can really become very heavy and burdensome especially if we obsess and ruminate about them. So we want to become more aware of our thoughts, the mental chatter that goes on. Um, and in doing so, we can sort of begin to see our thoughts from a more neutral position, sort of like watching your thoughts at a movie theater. 
you're back in the seats detached from the direct plot. You're not in the movie. You're not one of the actors. You're simply watching it from this sort of neutral position. So let's do um, another exercise. And this is, uh, we're going to be kind of aware of thoughts. Um, and then we're going to bring up uh, something that's sort of moderately stressful, mild or moderately stressful, and pay attention to a little bit of sort of some of the thoughts that come and go uh, attached to that. And then we're going to, to do a couple things to ease and soothe ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to take my video off here. <clears throat> And as we often do, just settle into a position that's comfortable for you, feet flat on the floor, back relatively straight, and just finding this nice position of balance and comfort and ease, but also that you, so that you can stay alert as we go through this exercise, which again, should probably take about maybe seven or eight minutes. And as we let the body settle, um, just notice where your mind is right now. Just be aware of any thoughts that are present right in the moment. You don't have to do anything about them. You don't have to fix anything or problem solve. Just be aware without getting caught up. And you can view them almost like they're in the screen in a movie theater. They're scrolling across your field of awareness, but you're sitting back in the seats and you're watching them. So just watching thoughts come and go. Some are you know, relatively small and minor. Some are kind of captivating and can sometimes hijack our attention. So if that happens, that's fine. You know, if a thought really captures you and takes you down the road a piece, just simply do your best to let it go and come back to sitting in the theater or come back to your body sitting here. You can feel your feet on the floor. You can also come back to your breath. It's another good anchor. So just be aware again for another moment or so of any thoughts that are present right now without any cue or stimulus, just what's going on in your mind right now. So let's stabilize with the breath in the body. So just notice the body sitting sitting here doing nothing on purpose. And take a moment to appreciate the opportunity to just be. Don't have to do anything, be anything special. Just anchoring yourself in your body sitting. Feeling the connection your feet make with the ground and being grounded. And then turning to your breath and using the breath as an anchor or a home base also, taking maybe a couple of deep breaths, expanding and rising on the in-breath, settling and subsiding on the out-breath, refreshing on the in-breath, releasing and relaxing on the out-breath. And remember, you can return to the breath or the body whenever your attention wanders, gently, without judgment. Now bring to mind a stressor in your life, something mild or moderate, maybe a four or five or a six out of 10. And get in touch with it and notice what arises in the mind. Again, not to fix or analyze or problem solve, just notice what thoughts come up when you get in touch with this stressor.
And now see if you can drop down into the body and notice how and where you feel it in the body. Sometimes we feel it in the chest or the shoulders or the jaw or the throat. Just see if you can detect it where you feel it in the body. Allow it to be there. And we're gonna say some simple phrases as, as you let it be there. This is stress. Stress is a part of life. Stress can help me in some ways. It can energize me and help me to meet a challenge. And may I find ease? So staying connected to the sensations in the body, continue to breathe and repeat the phrases again. This is stress. Stress is a part of life. Stress can energize and help me meet challenges. And may I find ease. May I find ways to soothe myself. And just continue to breathe and feel the breath moving in and out. And now just bring a smile to your face, kind of like we did last week. Just bring a half smile without strain. Perhaps think of a child or a pet or an image that makes you smile. Just feel the smile at your lips. Let it spread throughout your face, up to your eyes, down to your neck and shoulders, right down into the heart area. And continue to breathe slowly and evenly into the heart area. As you feel this sense of a smile, the warmth and friendliness and kindness that it brings spreading throughout your body. And just notice what that feels like. Allow the body to be receptive to this sense of a smile. And as you do this, just see if you can let things be just as they are. And at any time you can go back to the phrases, this is stress, stress is a part of life. Stress can help me, stress can energize me. And may I find ease. And just pausing for a moment, just see what this feels like in your mind and your body after we do this. And if you'd like, see if you can bring this quality of awareness with you, this sense of acceptance and soothing, no matter what's happening. And so finishing the meditation, you can close your eyes if you've had them closed and uh, might want to stretch a little bit. And you know, thank you for practicing that with me and um, hope you found that, that useful and helpful. So William James said it best, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. And if you can change your mind, you can change your life. So practice this, this might be something you wanna try again. Um, this I believe is on our meditation page on the EFR website but there's a few other stress ones there as well. Or we've done this before. This is just a really brief practice, the stop practice, remember this? So stop what you're doing when you feel a little stressed, take a deep mindful breath, and then observe inside, especially observing thoughts, but also feelings and body sensations. It's just a quick pause to check in, noticing those thoughts feelings, and body sensations. You might take another deep mindful breath and then proceed with this new awareness. 
So the idea is that we're trying to, um, with these different ways to see our thoughts clearly rather than let it let them build up and kind of clutter our minds. Um, so that even when a storm blows in, we can weather it and not make it worse. We can allow the, cl the clouds to kind of clear away and find some space and find some open sky. So that's our lesson for today. Thanks for joining me. Just want to remind you about the phone meditations. Um, feel free to join. These are at certain times, as you can see. But also there's this line here, which again is just three recorded options. And then of course, there are the resources um, on our website. That's the Achieve Solutions website. And also the YouTube playlist. That's where I'm putting up these videos. And to just finish today's lesson, I'll leave you with, with these quotes. So thank you so much for joining today and um, hope you've been getting something out of these that were in the last week. So we really kind of want to try to focus a little bit on how we can carry this forward after this week is over. There'll be another lesson on Wednesday and then on Friday, there'll be a live session at 12.30 to 1.15. Um, if you can't join that, that's not a problem. I will record it and send it out also as I've been doing. So take care. Have a great day and um, do your best to stress less.